Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Rachel Colton and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these macrame earrings. To make this design we're going to be using two different knots. The lark's head knot to attach our string to the hoop and the diagonal clove hitch knot to form the design. For this project I'm going to be using three millimeter single strand cotton string. This is from Naroma Studio and the color is Dusty Mustard. Now you can see my roll is almost out, but these earrings are a great way to use up scraps that you have left over from other projects. So I'm going to be going into my scrap bin to find everything I need today. To keep my earrings in place while I am knotting, I have a stack of four square cork boards and I'm going to be using these T-pins to secure everything in place so it's not moving around on me. To prepare your strings, you're going to want a tape measure to make sure that your string is long enough and a pair of sharp scissors. When we're done the design and ready to comb out our fringe, you need a fine tooth comb, either wire or plastic. It can be a human hair comb or it could be a pet brush. For the earring hardware, I have these hoops with this little bar at the top that has a hoop at the top and the bottom. We're going to be using this top one to connect what's called a fish hook earring. So you're going to need two of those as well. These actually came in a pack with some other hoops, so I will link that in the description for you. And when I use this fish hook type of earring backing, I like to have these plastic cylinders that I slip on there just to hold those in place so they don't slide out of your ear and get lost. And to assemble the two pieces of your earring hardware, you're going to want a pair of jewelry pliers. I'm using the kind that has this cone tip. They fit nicely into the fish hooks. Now that we have everything we need, let's get started. For this design with three millimeter string, you're going to need four strings for each earring and you want them to be at least 17 inches long. Once you have your string cut to size, you want to go ahead and grab four pieces of string, your first earring hoop, and two or three of these T-pins. Now I'm going to attach my string to my hoop before I pin it down just because you want to attach them sort of gently so you don't warp the shape of your hoop. Grab your first piece of string and you want to find the two loose ends, line those up, and then find the center of your string which will now have a loop. You're going to take the loop of your string and you're going to pass it through your earring hoop and you're going to pull it down in the back so that you have enough space to pass your loose ends through. So just feed those loose ends through that loop you created and then gently pull your knot up to meet the wire. Don't pull too hard or you will misshape your earring. This is called a lark's head knot and we're going to repeat that with the other three strings. So I'll show you again. Take your next piece of string Line up the two loose ends, find your way to center, which now has a loop. Take your loop through the earring hoop, pull it down in the back, and then feed your loose ends through that loop, and then gently pull them through and secure your knot at the top. And then you just want to repeat that with the other two strings. Once your strings are all attached, you can now take your T-pins and secure your earring to your surface. Now my T-pins are a little bit thicker than my four cork boards, so I'm just going to insert these at an angle. I'm going to put one through this top hoop and bring it all the way down to hold that in place. And then I'm going to take one and I'm going to put it above and through the center of this first lark's head knot over here on the right. And I'm going to put one through this lark's head knot on the left, just to keep everything from shifting around. Now we're ready to start our design. 
So you want to pick up this rightmost string, and this is going to come across at a diagonal towards center as our filler string. And we're going to be using the next three strings towards center to form our diagonal clove hitch knots. So pick up this next string over towards center. It's situated behind your filler string. So you're going to bring it over the filler string, forming this loop here, and then take that string over and behind the filler string through the loop, pull down gently, and then slide that knot up to the top. Now you're going to repeat that so take your working string, which is now off to the right, bring it over top of the filler string, around, behind, and through the loop, pull down, and then slide that up to meet the other half. Now you're going to repeat that with the next string towards center. It's behind your filler string, so cross it over, come around behind and through, pull down gently, and then slide up to meet the others. And then repeat. Over, around, behind, and through, pull down gently, slide up. And do that again with this next string over. And then you've reached the center on the right. So now we're going to do the same thing on the left. Your leftmost string will come across as your filler string and the three remaining strings will be your working strings, which will form your diagonal clove hitch knots. Once you reach the center point, you need to connect the two sides. So what I'm going to do is continue using the left filler string, and I'm actually going to pick up the right filler string, which is underneath, and I'll use that to form another two diagonal clove hitch knots, and that will connect the two sides together. We've now completed our first row of clove hitch knots. We're gonna do the same thing again to form a second row. So pick up your rightmost string. This will be your filler string coming across towards center. And then you're gonna form your diagonal clove hitch knots with the remaining three strings on the right. Once you reach center on the right, you're going to switch over to the left and do the same thing on that side. Leftmost string comes across as the filler. Remaining three strings will form your diagonal clove hitch knots. Once you've reached center, you need to connect the two sides again. So once again, take that filler string from the left, take the filler string from the right, which is underneath, and form another set of diagonal clove hitch knots to connect the two sides. At this point, the design is complete. What you wanna do now is you wanna trim off the excess. And you can see that we might have been able to go maybe an inch or so shorter with our initial strings, but you also want to leave yourself enough to work with. So I like to cut these to about half an inch for this design. So I'm just going to pick up the four strings on the left and I'm going to try to follow the diagonal of the design, come down about half an inch and then just cut directly across with some sharp scissors. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. Pick up those four strings, try to maintain the diagonal and the same length as the other side, and trim. Now you can either leave your strings as they are, or you can take your comb and just gently comb out some fringe. You want to separate all the individual fibers of the string 
until they are laying straight. And now you can remove your pins carefully. Don't want to pull any of your fibers out of your string. Now you want to grab the fish hook portion of your earring and your jewelry pliers so we can assemble the two parts. To open up your fish hook, what you need to do is find this loop at the bottom, take your pliers, insert one cone inside that loop, one on the outside, and just gently pull that away to create some space that we'll use to insert the earring hoop. Now this design has a definite front and a back. You want the front to be facing out when you're wearing these earrings. So you want this hoop of the fish hook to go back. So take this top loop here on your earring hoop and just insert the fish hook portion so that the hook is facing back. And then you just need to tighten up this loop that you opened by again inserting your pliers and then gently pulling that back the way it was. And that little ball there should help to keep this from separating and your earring coming apart. And again, with this fish hook type of earring, I like to add one of these plastic cylinder backings. This will give you a little extra security to make sure that this doesn't slide out of your ear. We now have a beautiful pair of macrame earrings. I love this color for the fall. You could also use red or green for the holidays that are coming up or anything that matches your style and your wardrobe. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that you'll give it a try. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel for more crafts and leave any questions or comments that you may have. Thank you and have a great day.